Hello my friends, welcome back to Tittle Tattle Tarot, it's Georgie. Um, I would like to do um, a series of readings on Marilyn Monroe, not from the traditional perspective of Marilyn Monroe, but I want to do three readings, each one of them on her husbands. So I'm going to start with the very first husband, Jim Doherty. Um, Marilyn had been in and out of foster care. I think she's had about 11 foster families. She's had a very, very unstable upbringing. Um, and I'm not going into her personal sort of upbringing or anything like that, because I want to concentrate on the energy of Jim Doherty. But her current foster parents, when she was about 15, were due to move away. And um, the situation was that really, you know, at 15, she would have to go into another children's home. She didn't want that. They didn't want that for her. And um, I believe it was Marilyn's mother, Gladys, who was actually um, not, not very well mentally. And I believe she was in an institution, but she was well enough to know that going back into a children's home was not the best thing for her daughter. So I believe that it was her suggestion that a marriage be arranged. And Marilyn was only 15 at this time, but um, she was basically betrothed to um, a young man who had been to the same school as her. So he was a local boy called Jim Doherty. And uh, he was 21. And Marilyn was just about to turn 16 when they got married. So, you know, she was just about legal. I think in California, 16 was the legal age. So she just squeezed in there, just literally 16 when she married him. So I'm going to do a Celtic cross. And this is all from Jim Doherty's point of view. And we will see what energy I pick up from this gentleman. Um, unfortunately, Jim Doherty, he um, died of leukemia. Um, back in 2005. So, you know, um, poor gentleman, he's no longer with us. So I'm just going to pull a Celtic cross with his energy. So Jim Doherty, Jim Doherty, and I'm just looking at my dates here. Yeah, it was 1942 that they got married. Him at 21, her at just 16. So let's start pulling this Celtic cross and see from Mr. Doherty's point of view what his relationship and his marriage was like. Jim Doherty's point of view, and I'll pull it now. Okay, hey, interesting. So let's start at the very beginning. We've got 1942, the wedding of Jim Doherty and Marilyn Monroe. I'm going to call her Norma. Norma. Norma Jean Baker married Jim Doherty at 16. He always knew her as Norma, so this is how she's going to come across in this. So Knight of Wands, oh my goodness. The, he thought he won the jackpot here. He had a lot of passion for her. Uh, very sort of... Um, Oh, a great sort of first love. It was her first love, his first love. Um, how much in love she was, I don't know. This was a marriage of convenience for her, but he was certainly bowled over by this beautiful young woman. Um, the innocence of her, um, just that whole first flush of this relationship, very passionate for her. And yes, she was she was caught up in it all um, because it was um, a grown up relationship for her. It was moving away from um, a foster family, from care into being a grown up. And um, the Knight of Wands, this is, you know, the first unions, the, the, the very sort of intimate relationship. Knight of Wands, very passionate, great start, great start. Um, and it's crossed here by... The Two of Pentacles, choices. That's an interesting one. Um, she had choices, but they weren't very great, were they? It was either, you know, you, you go into care, unfortunately, or you get married and you have these choices. So she had to weigh it up. She chose the getting married, but it was, um, you know, perhaps choices that she wouldn't have made um, 
<laughs> without being put into that two of swords. So she she was happy, don't get me wrong. You know, she had this um, really great early life with him. It must have been great playing house, I think. I think that's the way you could call this. For him, it was much more, for her, it was um, learning to be a woman and playing house. And, um, you know, that would have been very exciting. But the way that she got there, it, it was basically two choices, you know, either the children's home again or you get married. So, you know, she, she chose the better of two evils and, and it worked out well at first. But in the top of this, the tower was always looming. Now, this is a tower for Jim Doherty. This is his energy. This this was always looming because it wasn't a marriage based on an equal um, love for each other. It was a marriage based on a sexual attraction from him and the lesser of two evils from her, although she cared for him. So, you know, you're always going to have in the top position, hanging over this marriage, the tower. It's wobbly. It's it's waiting to, to fall because the foundations weren't secure. Um, you can't build a marriage just on some lust and playing house, which is what they did. They try to build a relationship and a future such as it was on lust and playing house because it was the lesser of two evils. But of course, that makes for a very wobbly, wobbly marriage, a very wobbly foundation. So in the bottom, you know, the, the bottom thing was now this doesn't come from Jim Doherty. This comes from Marilyn. This is um, as time goes on. This is like the boredom card. Um, and this is, you know, after that first flush of the excitement of playing house and the excitement of being a grown up, this is that card of the four of cups. Ugh. Oh, God, this is boring. There's got to be more to life than this. And this is your classical. Oh, what am I doing with my life? I'm bored with this. I'm bored cooking dinner. I'm bored, you know doing these wifely duties. It was great at first, lovely, let's pretend, let's play. But now uh, the bottom of it was underneath, um, she was bored. Him, no, no, he wasn't bored. He he wanted to have a wife there to cook him meals. And and this is his, his thought about his relationship with her was temperance. You know, it was um, very balanced and you know she did her wifely things he went out he worked he came back he wanted a family he he wanted like everything that was um balanced and right in a relationship remember this is all from his point of view but obviously Norma is going to come into this so we've got her dissatisfaction here but him no he was he was rather happy he felt that he had he had the package he had the package. He had that sort of balanced life. He he could go to work. He could have his career. He could come back, have this beautiful young wife, Norma, cooking him meals, um, being the housewife. They'd spoken about having children. And that was what he thought that his life was going to be. That was like his sort of early memories of being married to her. She, already the um, the boredom was setting in with her. And then the future of what was happening, well, she would walk away because this got too much. You know, this this um, mundane, mundane life got, got too much for her to bear. So she did walk away in the Eight of Cups and she didn't walk away from anything horrible. He wasn't beating her. It wasn't like um, a, a terrible relationship. I believe they were married for four years. And um, I think in 19, ooh, about 1944, he went into the Merchant Navy. So he went away overseas during the war. Um, and it was at that time she just wanted to walk away from her life. He, he didn't know. He didn't know. He was still in this temperance, this sort of quite um, rosy glow, this uh, lovely, oh, you know, I've got my wife waiting for me at home. When I come home, she will be there. I'm doing my work. I'm doing all the right things. And, and we will then have a family. And he's still in that very balanced energy. But no, she got dissatisfied. And already she was starting to branch away from him. And especially so when he went off in 1944 with the Merchant Marines. Now, we have the lover's card here. This is Choices. So, yes, I mean, the bottom of it was they had been lovers. You know, they they built their, their whole marriage on 
that original passion, that original attraction, especially from Jim Doherty. He had this very much a sexual attraction to her. Um, her, well, she thought he was handsome enough and, um, you know, as a, a choice better than going into a children's home, but she soon got bored. But yes, they had been lovers, you know, and this is the outside. This is the outside. So she was still with him. She was still with him. But um, she was working in a factory and um, Jim Doherty, he's very happy because he knows that she's bringing in some money. He's away, but he knows he'll come back to her and they will resume this. This is his energy here. Him and Marilyn, that choice of being together. But suddenly the communication, rather than being open communication in the Eight of Wands, the communication starts to fail. Um, he's wondering what's going on now. She's got a job in a factory during the war um, and something's happened and then the communication starts to recede. She's not writing to him regularly. Uh, messages aren't coming through as regularly and he's sort of here uh, starting to doubt his, um, his secure position, starting to doubt it. He still loves her, but the communication's stopping. And what actually happens is she divorces him while while he's still away i believe that um she she sends divorce papers uh five of cups this is jim doherty look look at what's been spilt look at what's gone she decides that she wants to be um a model and um there have been photographs taken of her at this factory and she's very very successful and um you know even hollywood is suggesting a possible film career but she can't be married. Uh, they want single women, you know, no chance of pregnancy or anything like that. And this alleviates the boredom, this boredom card. Oh my goodness, you know, um, yeah, marriage was great. It was great fun playing house for a while, but um, that was a choice I had to make. Now I can make a choice that I want to make. I can get out of this boredom position, but he still loves her very much. The communication's stopping now, not true communication coming through. He has to say goodbye to her. He has to, he has to let her go because she's going to divorce him and she wants to go off. Here we go. This is her going off to become someone totally different. And then we have the four of wands. This is now um, her going off. Um, I don't know what happened to Jim Doherty, whether he remarried or what. This isn't a bad ending. This isn't um, misery and, you know, uh, wound licking. I'm sure there was, but for her, this was a start of something great for her. For him, it must have been this, very much this five of cups, look what I've lost. You know, four years of this, thinking that she was the girl for me, the children we didn't have, the future we didn't have. We have this four of wands here, but I do have Jim Doherty's energy. So I want to know about this four of wands. I want to know about that card. Because for Marilyn, I guess that it was a four of wands because, um, you know, she had all the excitement then in her early years of um, going on and, you know, doing a few films. I think she did um, Ladies of the Chorus and she only had minor parts, but how exciting. And she certainly wasn't in this four of cups in this boredom period. So let's just see what this four of wands is and how it relates to Jim Doherty. Well, I think that for a long time, this burdened him. Look at this five of cups here. I think that we have here, the five of cups is very much Jim Doherty's energy. He had to say goodbye. Look at this emotion running out, running down the drain. He had to say goodbye to her. This is Norma's energy coming in here. She could be free. Look how these spirits are dancing. Um, this is like, you know, on the verge of something new, some sort of new security, um, uh, a modeling, a film security, as she saw it. And out of the humdrum, out of the boredom, walking away. So I see that very much as Norma's energy that's come through because her energy was so positive here, just wanting to get on with her life. His life had really slowed down here and stopped, you know, just looking at the disaster of what had happened. And there you have the 10 of wands, just such a burden on his back. 
um, he lost he lost somebody that he thought that um, he was going to be with. So I'm going to go right to the centre of the pack for Jim Doherty. Let's just have Jim Doherty's energy here. Jim Doherty, the hermit. Yeah. Okay, and let's have here justice. His life. It was fine. It went on well. You know, unfortunately, this poor man, he did get leukemia. Um, but the hermit, um, he made wise decisions in his life. He had a good career. He was the kind of person that um, was very much, um, I'm not quite sure what he did later in life, but somebody who was um, a trusted figure, who was um, uh, very much um, a leader in what he did. Um, so if you know anything about Jim Doherty's later career, please let me know. But wise choices. He made wise choices with his life. Um, he was not he was not interested in film and he wasn't interested in fame or anything like that. He was um, a down to earth, salt of the earth kind of person, which the hermit is. And justice, again, this is um, making wise decisions, being very balanced about your life. So his life um, actually turned out better than her life. Um, justice here, this makes me think of legal things, of um, the law. As I say, I don't know what he did, but um, yeah, he, he's a very grounded man, very grounded man. Um, and I would think I'm going to go right underneath here. Hang on, that is, that's that was there. So I'm going to go right underneath here and see the very bottom of the pack, see what the very bottom of the pack picks over. Eight of Swords. I think this is memories. Um, the Eight of Swords. This is um, thinking back, being being pecked by these these birds. Eight of Swords is um, these are thoughts in your mind. Um, he thinks back to Norma Jean and his love for her. She didn't stay as Norma Jean she left she became something that he didn't know he couldn't he couldn't see his Norma Jean in what she became he he couldn't couldn't embrace what she was later he thought she was beautiful and he thought she was a wonderful film actress but that wasn't the person that he'd been married to and that's sort of the the vibe that I'm getting from this eight of swords um you know eight, eight of swords is like you build a prison for yourself I don't really see that but I see this as um his memories, he his memories were of this Norma Jean. And in a way, she died. Um, and this is very much like a prison. It's mourning. And I see this as he mourned for Norma Jean. Because when she divorced him and she went off, that that character was dead. And I think he he mourned her. I, I see that very much as a card of regret and mourning for this person who never existed after that so I think that's very interesting but, but he went on he had a very grounded life and he was very much followed and uh, very much truth and justice this man I don't know what he did but um but he always looked back and remembered something that didn't exist anymore and it was a little bit uh, not torturous but upsetting for him he, he couldn't see her anymore he couldn't he couldn't hold that person anymore because they no longer existed so that is the feel that I get for Jim Doherty, who was Marilyn Monroe's first husband for four years. Um, I would like to know, I just got this from it. Um, I have no other feelings, no other information on Jim Doherty. If you have more and you have anything to add to this, I will be very, very pleased to hear it. My next reading will be on Joe DiMaggio, and then I will finish off with Arthur Miller. So that was from um, Mr. Doherty's point of view and his energy. May he rest in peace. And I hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you very much. Bye bye.